from the Catholic underground. All righty, today on the show, decoding the Pope. You're going to pay more for Amazon shipping. Your files held for ransom. Making good habits, our picks of the week, and so much more. The Catholic underground starts right now. Alrighty, it's time for the Catholic Underground, your weekly Catholic guide to the digital continent. It's episode number 246. I'm Father Chris Decker. If you are listening live, you can join us at catholicunderground.tv and get your chat on. A special welcome to our listeners all around the world. And for those of you joining us on Catholic Live Television in Baton Rouge, hello to my parishioners. I know that there are folks in St. James that are praying for me, and I certainly know uh, in Vashri as well. And so uh, we welcome them. We also welcome Kathleen Lee. She's a teacher at St. Joseph's Academy. She goes to St. Thomas More Parish in Baton Rouge, and she is our resident faith ninja. Hello, Kathleen. Hello, everyone. Also, we got Jeff Blackwell. He's the technical director of the CU. He's the commandant of the Jeff Star One, presently at Our Lady of Mercy in Baton Rouge. Hey, Jeff. It's a pleasure to be here, Father. And Mary Kate Taylor, our video director for the live stream, if you're watching us on YouTube Live. Uh, Mary Kate, I believe, goes to, to Mercy in her spare time. But sometimes she's been known to go to other parishes as well. And so uh, we welcome Mary Kate, as always, to the program. She is our silent witness to the, the broadcast. And so uh, we kick off with the Pope, as we've done before. Um, all the media spin that's been happening with Pope Francis, or really any other pontiff uh, since media and popes were coinciding. Um, the Vatican Senior Communications uh, Advisor, Greg Burke, who you remember, Kathleen, uh, was was taken from Fox News. He actually was offered a job by the mm. Secretary of State um, as one of their advisors. And he's been speaking a good bit, and he was talking about what it's like getting information to Pope Francis and what somebody has to do to get the real Pope Francis. Have you noticed that everybody's trying to find out who the real Pope Francis is? Yes, and I, I love it because he's he is real. Yeah. He's being real, and yet people are still expecting there to be something else. That's right, and, and, and ultimately that's... Uh, that's what Greg Burke was saying. He says, look, he, here's the deal. We kick the ball to Francis, and Francis scores the goals. I guess it's like any good uh, communications wing. They bring him all the information. They say, Holy Father, you might want to cover this, or you might want to talk about that, or you might need to address this. I mean, you notice, uh, Jeff, have you noticed that, do you subscribe to the Pope's Twitter feed? I do. and um... <laughs> It's been active, huh? <laughs> yes. As a matter of fact, it has been, Father. And, and I can't remember, I was just trying to think off the top of my head the last thing I received, but. Yeah, but but I mean he's tweeting regularly something that's, like that's, every day at that's least. A good point, and yes. and uh, and so that presumably goes uh from the the communications office maybe Greg Burke in his office. Gotcha. And uh I'm sure that that Pope Francis probably comes up with things himself and says, "Well, I'd like to say this, how do I say it?" And so so Greg's been been helpful in that. Uh he says um that it's not charm that makes Pope Francis uh, easy to to communicate and be communicated by. Uh, he says he clearly knows how to communicate. It's Christian charity, he says, which is a whole lot more attractive than charm. And I think there's a lot of truth to that, too. Um, I know we all remember Pope John Paul II and how he was he was charming, but in the same kind of way, his authenticity w was charming, too. You know, um, he, he had a way, I remember um, probably late in his pontificate, I forget which World Youth Day it was, but uh, he was given a, a hockey stick might have been Toronto, actually. That would make sense. Uh, was that Pope Pope John Paul II in Toronto? I think so. No, that's what it was, was one thinking, of his last yeah. World Youth Days. I, I believe you're right. And he, they gave him the hockey stick, and he, you know, made the the hockey. He he swung it, you know, because mm -hmm. he was a sportsman in his day. That's not just charm. That's that's truly being being authentic. And um, Greg Burke further says uh, the gospel is not there to make us feel good. The gospel is there and makes very practical demands on us. And one of those demands is to tell people the truth and to walk with them to the Lord. And he says that Pope Francis is doing that. And um, he said also that the Pope's picture should have one of those warning labels, much like a pack of cigarettes, he said, <laughs> but, <laughs> but with the words, danger, this man could change your life. Wow. And, and that really, I, I think we're seeing more than anything, uh, Pope Francis has that desire to bring about transformation. And so we're seeing kind of a new, people think that it's a new side of the pontiff, but it's really just Pope Francis being himself, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and so um, Greg Burke offers 
Pope Francis in 10 words, and because we like lists here on the Catholic Underground, naturally, we, sure, we yeah. gravitated towards this. Uh, so he says, this is perhaps the best way that you can decode the pontiff. So number one, he says, mercy. Uh, the story of the prodigal son with, uh, with Pope Francis is a recurring theme, and he repeatedly says over and over and over that God never tires of forgiving and welcoming his lost children back home. The church is waiting here for you with open arms. That's the message uh, that Greg Burke says that overall, that's what Pope Francis is trying to, to portray. Have you, have you noticed that uh, in, in the addresses and whenever you've seen him? That seems to be what most people are kind of drawn to. I, and I t- one of the things he said, and I don't, I haven't looked at all the list here, yeah. but um, but that he addressed gossiping is one of the things we need to yeah. do. And I'm like, wait a minute, this is this is like real life, everyday, right? Living Pope, <laughs> and so yeah, yeah. Uh, he I knows that it's really, there. Yeah, of course, of course. I think Italy may uh, may be one of the gossip capitals of the world. <laughs> um, usually, it's around the time of a conclave and and on through, you know. But um, but I know that that he's had to deal with that probably in in his own circles. But yeah, that's that's a very good example of something that's real, that's authentic, that touches almost every mm-hmm. experience. Yeah. And, uh, and, and that really, it is gossip that can cause us to veer away like the prodigal son. I mean, I bet, I bet in an all-girls school, Kathleen, there's no gossip at all. No, mm. not at all. I've never seen any in my life there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, we deal with that. And, and you know, um, I think what he's, what he's saying when he talks about the prodigal son is he's pointing out those times when we are away. Yeah. And getting, you know, and, and really saying, hey. Yeah. You're away and you're out in the world, but come on home. Yeah, everybody drifts from time to time. Yeah, and, and that's that's a, that's kind of a, a normal uh, a normal response of being human is is that we drift. And and Jeff, uh, you know as well as I do that there are any number of reasons that people leave the Catholic faith, or yeah. maybe they just become kind of apathetic in their practice of the faith and they just kind of drift away. And it seems to me that that countering this this kind of great overarching agnosticism that that is kind of looming in our world well what could be more perfect than pope francis making one of his primary messages that of mercy that of god is always willing to welcome you back the the second option or the second um um, tick here that he gives Mm -hmm. is that the holy father has moxie or courage Mm -hmm. he says we're all going to get challenged by pope francis get ready um, people who live comfortably or live in a developed nation will be especially challenged, Burke said, adding that this is good and this is the gospel. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have to admit, as, as a priest, I've been challenged by Pope Francis. I, I have. Um, uh, sometimes, in, in fact, I, I don't say this too too much, but uh, but I say, geez, I just wish that the Holy Father would, would just stop talking for a week. You know, um, not because I don't want him to speak, but... I have to have some time to chew on what he's saying and to figure out a way to, to be able to feed it to my flock. And, uh, and, and sometimes he can be so, um, so evocative or, or so kind of raw in, in what he says, especially in those daily mass homilies, mm-hmm. that I think to myself, well, this is something that I would do in a daily yeah. mass homily. You know, sometimes you do have to go for the jugular. But boy, the Holy Father, what, he's doing that. Every morning, you know, and and it's one of those things that that, that level of authenticity, it, it's a very courageous authenticity, and uh, and and I think that that he's probably right. We're all going to get challenged by Pope Francis. I bet you've been challenged, Kathleen, already. Yeah, you know, and even as somebody who lives a, a life of of social justice, it's kind of my thing. Yeah, you know, um, I definitely have been challenged, and you know, I find myself going, "Oh, dang! <laughs> all right, like, okay, well, I guess we're going to go there." But he really does. You know, it's kind of like, um, you know, when you have, I don't know how to explain it, but like a splinter. Like you have to get yeah. in there and just get it out. Like it's going to hurt, but you got to get in there to get it out. Right. And, and to make it, it clean. You know, so you're mm. like. There's right. a whole bit of mercy in with that yeah. too, right? Sometimes being merciful. I mean, I think about the, the, the lion with, uh, with, you know, a splinter in its paw or something. Mm-hmm. Well, the lion, it, it puts on a big show. Sure. But whenever someone shows the lion mercy by ripping the thorn out of its paw, mm-hmm. um, then then perhaps um, then perhaps they've shown courage, yeah. and maybe the lion will respect that. You know, yeah. yeah. Uh, so so what a, a neat thing. Now the third thing is margins and missions, and this is right up Kathleen's. Uh, um, what do they call that in, in baseball? I don't know. The strike zone. 
right in the strike zone. All right. I I'm, was thinking I'm alley, right up her alley. Right up her Yeah, there you go. <laughs> bowling. Uh, <laughs> it's a sport. Why didn't I default to the bowling? Yeah, anyway. Francis is continuing with his predecessor's criticism of a world divided into the haves and have nots. The Pope, he says, quote, is not a fan of cheap grace and feel good religion. He wants to see Christians who are not afraid to get their hands dirty. And and that right there, that is, I think, one of the big things that is most challenging about Pope Francis, especially if we're in a, a culture of the haves, right? Absolutely. And and he is, he's challenging us right there um, to, to say, okay, you need to look at the margin. You need to look at those who nobody else wants to look at. You, you need to go out. You need to be willing to do that. Yeah. I know, Kathleen, uh, that, that you have led a number of missions to different territories within the world. And what's that like for, for a young person to experience? Well, you know, it's, uh, I'm looking at him and, 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 you know, I can go and talk about missions and, you know, send my girls out to missions or send youth out to missions and right. say, go and do the work. It's going to be rewarding. But what's great about, um, about Pope Francis is he doesn't just say, hey, yeah. you, you know, you haves and you should, you should deal with the have nots and y'all should mingle. Yeah. But he does it. And yeah. he has done it without ever, you know, before he even talks about it, yeah. he does it. Do you think that comes from living in a mission territory like Argentina? I would imagine. I would imagine. And so it's so. kind of built in. If I'm going to be a priest in in this kind of have not society, or really sure. something in Argentina, it's very divided, more so than here in, in the United States. And so I guess if you are ordained within into that milieu, then you're going to be very aware right. of maybe how the church universal is not doing that. Sure. And it's not you know when you go out and do mission, you see some these societies that aren't set up like America. There is no yeah. You know, there are no, you know, there's no assistance to the poor. Yeah. There's no, there's not a lot of governmental structure that's set up to give the kind of assistance that we have in America. Mm-hmm. And so really it is up to the people. It, it, it's up to the people themselves to take care of each other. Yeah. You know, so instead of donating clothes to an agency that's going to get, cl- you know, clothes out to those who are, you know, who don't have it. Yeah. You actually have to go out and give your clothes to those people. Yeah. Um, and so you don't go a, to an intermediary. Yeah. You know, it, it's. The, the works of mercy are, are on you. Mm-hmm. Um, and mm-hmm. so it's, it's very interesting to see that when there isn't a, you know, somebody that we can give it to and then they take care of the poor. And yeah. so we've then taken care of the poor, but not, you know, on a, on a face-to-face yeah. level. Yeah, very rarely do we ourselves become St. Vincent de Paul. Sure, yeah. Usually we give it to the society. And so maybe the Holy Father is making that challenge of go in your own community and see, mm-hmm. you know. Um, the, the fourth thing that he, he holds up is prayer. Um, non-believers often don't notice how important prayer is for religious life. For example, Blessed Mother Teresa was often looked upon by the secular press as a social worker wearing a habit, and we'll talk a little bit about that later. Um, but he said the Pope has constantly been stressing the importance of prayer and urging people to pray. These have been some of the most beautiful things. Um, if you haven't uh, Googled Pope Francis on prayer, um, I guess perhaps because he is he's a Jesuit, he is schooled in the Ignatian modes of prayer, the idea of consolation and desolation and the ways to pray and that sort of thing. It's kind of a natural thing for him to, to express how to pray. But to those of us who are so busy in, in the world, um, uh, really to be able to reconnect with his meditations on how real prayer is and how it's not just me talking to God and God, if he has time, listens— mm-hmm but that it really is a conversation that's taking place. And, and I think that that's, we, we often undercut prayer, uh, even as, as Christians. We think it's the first thing that can just kind of go by the wayside. Yeah. And yet it's prayer that informs all of the other activity that we do. If we want to do a work of mercy, well, I promise you that it's prayer that has brought that about in, in our heart. You know, it's the Holy Spirit talking to us, yeah. and prayer is kind of sussing that out. Yeah, I was just talking to a student of mine today, we were talking about how we struggle, where our struggles are in prayer. And I said, you know, I teach theology um, mm-hmm. and I, I am surrounded by the faith. Yeah. Um, and so, but for me, one of the hardest things to do is to pray. Yeah. Because I'm always thinking, well, you know, I teach theology, you know, isn't that prayer and prayer by action? And, but there's not a lot of time in my life where I slow down and I actually have purposeful prayer. Yeah. You know, so yeah, it's a definite challenge for, for somebody who is in that yeah. community. That's right. Yeah. The, the next thing he holds up uh, connected to that is encounter. And this is actually the theme for the upcoming World Communications Day. Uh, the Pope's asking people to embrace what he calls a culture of encounter. In the same way that Pope Benedict uh, coined the, the term digital continent, I think that Pope Francis is 
coining this term, culture of encounter, where they experience God and meet with others, including non-believers. This attitude of encounter and communion also starts at home with the family. Now, Jeff, this is one of those things that, that I think is probably perhaps the most challenging uh, about what Pope Francis is saying. He's talking about mission, he's talking about margins, but he's talking about also the centrality of the encounter with God that one has with father and mother, with brother and sister. Mm. And, I mean, uh, you, you've you seen the, uh, just in living in the world, you've seen the destruction of the family. Absolutely, and and, uh, and we see it all the time uh, in the U.S. on television programs. You know, that yeah, it's it kind of held a, up almost. Yeah, right, it's, it's a norm. So it's nice uh, to have the Pope calling uh, this so-called norm out, calling yeah. it out. And saying and this is not normal. It. Exactly, right. right. And saying this is, you know, we need to be more involved in getting the word out. And, and not only, I, I don't, I, it's actually just behaving yeah. um, well, like well, Christians. Yeah, exactly, putting, uh, putting theory into practice. There um, you, go. you know, I know you have soccer practice uh, tonight. But but we are going to sit down as a family, mm-hmm. and and we're going to eat before soccer practice. Uh, I know I know yeah. that you want to do that, but while while you're a child in my house, not you're going to live by my rules, although that's important. But but we are going to be a family together. We're going to to live together in community, and I think sometimes we forget that a family is a mini monastery. Mm-hmm. You know, it really is. Yeah, it's it's yeah. supposed to be, and so yeah, encounter is very important. Um, the next one is joy. Uh, Greg Burke says the Pope gets a thumbs up on that, and I think we can probably say that he does. Uh, mm. The Pope uh, is always smiling. He's probably giving John Paul I a run for his money there. Mm. Um, uh, according to Pope Francis, he said the biggest dangers and temptations in life are, quote, discouragement, discord, and the doldrums of the devil, unquote. And, and, and I mean, we all get there to the point where sometimes we are almost to the point of despair. You know, um, depression is not just a clinical problem, but depression is one of those things that can happen to any of us, you know, especially if our prayer life is kind of sagging and that sort of thing. And so the Holy Father is inviting us to to kind of key in on joy once again. That's very, very important. And then uh, service. This is a big one, right, Kathleen? Absolutely. Um, and he showed this. The Holy Father showed this by paying his hotel bill mm. in person after he was elected. You remember it was the day of. Yeah, that's right. The yeah. first thing he did was he went down and he paid his hotel bill. Yeah. And and that's that's an easy message. Uh, Greg Burke says the message is it's not about power or privilege. If we're here, we're here to serve. Right. And of course, that's what we try to do in the Catholic Underground. You know, um, we try to, to serve you through this apostolate. Number eight, simplicity and humility. Um, the the notion of living in the Vatican guest house instead of the Apostolic Palace, uh, carrying his own briefcase on a trip. Those are just um, in the same way that perhaps Pope Benedict showed us liturgically how. Uh, the liturgy ought to be celebrated. Pope Francis might be showing us, uh, outside of the liturgy, how our lives should be celebrated. I don't know. I just had that thought just now. Hmm. Uh, And then number nine, compassion. Compassion and suffering with others is something that Pope Francis has a knack for. Um, It's especially evident when he embraces people, and we've seen that, uh, Kathleen, some of the most beautiful stuff is when he's locked in the embrace with someone who has special needs. Yes. I, and he, like, right away, he, he'll stop everything he's doing. I love watching him. Yeah, you know, just stop the Pope mobile mm-hmm. and say you. He'll even get off. Yep. You know, and go into the crowd. It's beautiful. Yep. And then uh, finally, number ten. All of this is summed up in energy, um, mm-hmm. not your chakras, because we don't believe in all that. Mm-hmm. But uh, but Burke said for a seventy-six-year-old man, the Pope has a lot of energy, and we're going to be in for an interesting ride. Uh, Jeff, I hope I have that much energy at 76. I hope I see 76. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I'll tell you this though. One, one uh, there's there was a term in in broadcasting years ago. I don't know if it's still used, but um, uh, there was a a format for radio stations like yeah. the top 40 and right. and uh, album oriented rock or whatever. There there was one called Mass Appeal mm. uh, to to try to appeal to as many people as possible. And there's different genres. Yes, and um, the you know Pope Francis certainly has mass appeal, but we can also apply it to you know get yourself back to church yeah. and uh, start living as a Catholic as a Christian. That's right. Uh, he, it's it's interesting. He's using his mass appeal to appeal for the mass. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if he Holy Father, if you need a new uh, motto, if, if you wear the one that you've got out, I think Jeff's got got it for you. 
Oh, I, like I like it, Jeff. <laughs> See you from the Catholic underground. All righty, you're listening to the Catholic Underground. We're online at catholicunderground.com. I'm Father Chris Decker. We've got Jeff Blackwell, Kathleen Lee, and Mary Kate Taylor. Our picks of the week are coming up a little bit later. But first, if you're an Amazon user... You may very well be forking out a little bit more money, Kathleen. Amazon has raised the free shipping threshold for its non-Prime members to thirty-five American dollars. So you've got to spend at least thirty-five bucks in order to get the free shipping. Kathleen, do you use Amazon that often? I do. You do. Um, I don't use it. You know. You're you're not one of those people who is on a first name basis with the UPS guy. No, um, (laughs) but I do. I do enjoy. Like I love going to Amazon and buying like series. Of, of TV shows. Oh, yeah. Are you an Amazon Prime subscriber? No, but I am on somebody's... Oh, you're you're a daughter. Yes. Like on your parents or something like that, or yeah. a friend. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, so you, can, you can enjoy... Mm-hmm. Yeah, I see. Because, Jeff, you're a, you're a Prime subscriber as well. Yeah, occasionally I have to uh, have those um, emergency electronic purchases. Indeed. For, for my business, okay. Uh, but uh, it really comes in handy, and I, I it pays for itself every year. Yeah, that in and of itself. Uh, I use Amazon a lot because I'm a bit of a bookworm mm-hmm. and to say nothing of the, the techno nerd. And, uh, and yeah, well, just some of the stuff here at Catholic Underground, um, we've needed on a quick turnaround because something breaks. And, yeah, it does, it does pay for itself. But if we weren't using Amazon Prime, um, we would have to spend at least 35 bucks. So that means you can't just get uh, your 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 one CD series for nine ninety nine, mm-hmm. or you can't just get that one book from Ignatius Press for twelve dollars. You've got to get at least five books. Now, honestly, I don't. It's kind of like whenever I go to the big box store, I usually can't get out for less than fifty dollars. Yeah. Even if I went in for only fifteen dollars worth of stuff. True. And Amazon kind of is the same way. I don't. I'm not really sure what secret sauce they've they've uh, they've put in their code, but man, it knows exactly what I like. It can't be of God. <laughs> yeah. It's, it really is devil's advocate stuff there, you know. Well, I don't know about that. I, I, no, I, I get not. those. You know, I get those uh, those same kind of emails or reminders every time you go to the site. Uh, uh, last time you were here, you were looking at this and looking at that. Here's some suggestions. So. <laughs> and these are more expensive suggestions. Of course, but right. I think that's that's just being a good sales uh, That's true, and they, they've got that algorithm uh, right. Uh, uh, they do, yeah. One of the other things that they're they're changing uh, for for Prime subscribers is there used to be Kathleen. I don't know if you ever used this, but say you didn't want it in the regular shipping time. Say you wanted it next day. Oh yeah, I done that. And you just pay oh three ninety nine. Yeah. Flat rate next day. Well, if you are a Prime subscriber, they're going to change that so that they're going to take height and weight. So when you order all of I Love Lucy, all of the Lucy Show, all of Here's Lucy, and all of the Lucy Desi Comedy Hour. That's going to weigh about seventy-eight pounds, and so you're gonna. That's going to be taken into to account. I don't like that. And neither does the ghost of Lucille Ball. I Dang it, I, Amazon! I can't <laughs> back that up. But I guess it's one of those things where you know you you have to start to figure out. Well, if we are Amazon, we we've got to make some money somehow. Yeah. And uh, and I think what's according to the story that we'll put in the show notes uh, for Mashable, uh, their their shareholders are have always been concerned about this. And uh, they've been more concerned, the, the actual folks at Amazon have been more concerned with the customer experience. And so they figured that they, they've hooked us. And so now they can kind of start paying attention to their shareholders who are saying, when are we going to see the check? Yeah, I, you know, I read something in passing, and I can't tell you where it was, um, online this past week, in fact, that Amazon surprisingly doesn't make the amount of money that it should, you know, that it should, or it, yeah, you know, it looks they're not like. making a, a huge profit margin, yeah. and and that's true. I was true. surprised. Yeah, you'd think. So this makes sense. All right, Amazon. Yeah, but they're. I think what they're using is kind of some of the the Walmart tactics of of buying in such a volume and kind of uh, haggling with the the, the people. Mm-hmm. I I wonder if there aren't some social justice issues there. You know, and, and the relationships that they mm. have with some of their customers. I, I don't know. I mean, with their, their suppliers. Because, you know, I've seen a couple of uh, of those um, those big box exposés on the CNBC. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, you, you can wonder that, that they're trying to drive the price down so high 
or so much, they're mm-hmm. trying to roll back or whatever, right, right. that the the suppliers are actually having to cut their costs in a way that that maybe makes the product detrimental in some way or not a higher quality product or things yeah. like that. There's always something down the line, it seems. And I think uh, also at the same time, they have probably worked out some agreements with like FedEx and UPS. And yeah, they have. Even the USPS. Just, uh, just the, the bulk, I believe. Uh, Father Ryan yeah. knows all of this, but... Ah, uh, okay. But they do, they because they operate and they're kind of a regular customer, right. they probably just go, I think they go ahead and upfront them so much a month or whatever. Ah, so okay. it behooves them to say, yeah, well, we'll give you free shipping if you give us $4 million, you know, that kind of yeah. thing. Um, so, but something to, to look out for. Uh, now, Jeff, you came up with this next story um, because you're you're a PC user, <laughs> although this doesn't seem to be uh, related to, to any particular... Um, to any particular operating system, but it's called ransomware. Yeah, they're calling it ransomware, and I'm afraid of this a little bit. Put on my my glasses. Your here spectacles. Yeah, but, uh, because there there were some viruses uh, that were known as the uh, DOJ and FBI uh, viruses. Yeah. But ransomware has kind of taken it a step further in that, um, in essence, what it does is it behind the scenes encrypts files Yikes. on your computer. Kind of, you know, it's just back there encrypting stuff. And uh, it, I, I don't know, it could take um, uh, literally many hours, if not days. But then once it gets stuff encrypted, and the way you can tell really is just if you're watching your, your hard drive, if it's, it's ticking away in the background and you're not doing anything, there's oh, something yeah, going on. Oh, yeah, your CPU usage yeah, is high. Yeah, right. Well, it'll uh, send you um, uh, 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 or actually put up an alert saying that, uh, okay, we've got your files, we're holding them for ransom, and if you uh, will pay us, then we'll release it. If not, we're going to just uh, go ahead and destroy these files. You heard him right, Kathleen. Yeah. I am shocked. Now, this is uh, this has been uh, going on in Russia for, uh, for uh, I think, a little over a year However, uh, there have been six cases reported in the U.S. I don't know if it's anything to really be overly concerned about right now, but there are some some companies out there, you know, spyware type yeah. companies that um, and virus, you know, that that, that are on the lookout for it. Uh, however, I, I kept I, the, to me like the easiest way to uh, I would think would be to try to follow the money trail because if you got to yeah. pay somebody to get your your files back. Uh, oh, yeah. There should be some documentation. I would imagine there's probably some sort of laundering going on there. You know, you drop the hundred dollars in uh, on a on a Visa gift card, yeah. and then that goes to an account, and that goes to another account. You probably could, but Wait, I I'm, tell you, if you really think it through, I bet they've got it thought through. Oh, I'm sure. And uh, we've we've had this discussion probably over a year ago about uh, uh, that. Uh, uh, Scripture in the Bible about the mark of the beast that we're all going to have. Oh, right. But, uh, RFID it, chips and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that That's going to be, and because I'm, I'm sure you've had your bank account hacked. I've had mine hacked a couple of times. Oh, it, yeah. It's a By the huge, Dutch. Huge nuisance. And um, I mean, there, there are things in place to, you know, to, to get your money back, but, but it's yeah. still, it's the aggravation you have to go through in the days without the money and trying to get it all worked out. So. Actually, they were Danish, I think. They were Danish oh. hackers, not Dutchmen. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, <laughs> Hollanders. I do apologize. I had a friend of mine uh, who had his uh, PayPal account hacked and oh, yeah. bought $7,000 worth of airline tickets to wow. Saudi Arabia. So, uh, oh. Yeah. It's, uh, so there's always somebody out there taking something that's beautiful and good and trying to corrupt it, and here's another that's one of true. those instances. That's true. And, and that's, that's the thing. Um, one of the things that, that we advocate here at the Catholic Underground is how beautiful technology is and how useful it is and how we should use it. But as with anything, uh, tools that are given to us, we believe that God has given us the ability to to use technology. We believe that he's given us the ability to to put cogs together and make little wheels spin so that you get a watch. You know, that's the beauty of how the Lord has engineered an ordered universe. Well, we can always take what has been ordered by him and we can disorder it. That mm. is the that is the great human weakness is we can take what's ordered and we can make it chaotic right very very good so i mean that's that's the thing so so we continue to watch i don't know uh kathleen what do you think should you pray should you pray for the hackers yes you should yes good answer it's it's never easy because i you know my bank account was hacked and they drained it they drained it and at first you know it makes you angry you know you feel as you know nobody came into my home or anything right they come. It's it's a violation. It's you know. Yeah. Well, how dare you? 
and that you had to get past the anger. Mm-hmm. Now, I was in the middle of, of the um, Arizona desert on a mission trip oh, with, yeah. with you know, 10 high school kids. And I was like, and ah! yeah, you in a pay <laughs> phone. I, yeah. Right. Literally. And, um, and, you know, she was like, drive to your nearest bank. <laughs> right. That's uh, an hour and a half. That's in you Phoenix. Know? Yeah. And, and this whole, inca- you know, and I was like, well, I'm, I'm here, you know, even at the time. You know, I was like, I'm here doing your work. Like, I'm, I'm serving the people. And this is going to happen. It was like, yep, this is going to happen. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. You know, and it was, it was hard, but it was an experience to the kids. I had, I had to turn around and be, you know, pleasant for the kids and i had yeah. to be patient with my dad who was helping me from from louisiana there you, go. you know and then it then it came down to the to once i had calmed down the thought of why people do this yeah you know and and how how yeah what's behind it what motivates what kind it? of existence is that that that's what yeah. you do you know for for your life and um and so yeah absolutely you should it's not always easy to get there but Hopefully you can get there. Mm-hmm. Indeed. And so we, we continue to watch it. And, of course, uh, as these things break, Catholic Underground will report it. Uh, uh, there is something that Father Ryan, uh, who couldn't be with us this evening due to, uh, well, he's a priest. You know, things happen. Um, uh, he put this in the show notes, but I decided to leave it in. Uh, for those of you who watch us on the video feed, uh, it's it's really something. It is portraits of uh, of men who have gone to war. And they've taken a picture of them before, during, and after their uh, their time in the in the theater, and it captures the the innocence uh, of of these men transformed into gaunt, sullen faces over the course of a year. And uh, for those of you listening to us in the podcast version, we'll put this in the show notes. But but you really can see in the pictures the these men who 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 seem uh, kind of kind of young and innocent. And how much aging can take place in a very, very short period of time. And uh, one of the things that, that's very noticeable is, you know, they, they say that the eyes are the window yeah. to the soul. Um, yep. it, it could just be the light in which they're being photographed mm-hmm. afterwards. But it, it almost looks like their pupils are, are dilated in a way that they weren't beforehand. Their, their eyes are kind of more, um, more evocative. Yeah, I mean, you could, see, you could actually see the life uh, and, and the light in their eyes and then uh, after... Mm-hmm. Uh, going to war, how that that light is somewhat extinguished. That's right, uh, which, which is all the more, uh, of course, we, we pray for. There is a, actually a mass that can be offered for uh, our persecutors, you know, and, and, I, and I wonder if, uh, if maybe chaplains in, in the Army or the Navy or, or the Marines uh, don't, don't offer that, uh, mm-hmm. that particular mass uh, in time of war. There's also one in time of war, and... Uh, and you can really see how it's possible for one not necessarily to lose your soul but to to really be challenged and um and so it, all the more that we we must pray for for our armed men and women those in the armed services who who really are uh, undergoing a number of battles uh, it's not just picking up the AK47 it's not just uh, the, with your gun but you're really fighting an internal battle i'm sure and of course we know about post traumatic stress disorder and things of that nature um, and so uh, it's just a reminder to us that that war, war really can be hell, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and and even if we are even if we are at war at times for for just cause, uh, it still affects it can affect the soul. And and of course that's why they say that um, that there there is no atheist in a foxhole, mm-hmm. you know. Right. That that right. at some point you you cry out to the Lord. And um, and how important it is that that those who are in the armed services. In fact, I know there are a couple of listeners uh, that, that I'm aware of who have served in the armed services or who are serving, and uh, and you know all too well that that you must keep your relationship with God at the forefront. Otherwise, that light that has a way of leaving the eyes in the theater of war um, can stay extinguished. But but the Lord always reminds us that He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the light, as Saint John tells us in the Gospel. And um, and so with uh, with these very striking pictures that we'll put in the show notes, you can see that that it's always a danger. But of course, um, the Lord is always present when we call on Him. That's one of Pope Francis's things. Yeah. And I just wanted to remind those listening uh, via radio, uh, if you're looking for the show notes, 
Ah, uh, that's right. Where do we find those, Father? <laughs> well, you head on over to CatholicUnderground.com, and once you head to CatholicUnderground.com, you click on the latest show. That's there on the front page, uh, or you can search our archives for for re, uh, recent shows or all the way back to show number one. Um, or if you remember something that we mentioned, you can usually search in the search box, and if we type that in uh, whenever we made the post, you can search for it that way. And, and this is show number 246? And so this is show right? 246, okay. and so you'd search for show 246, and you'd get all the stuff that we talked about. Great. Yes, indeed. Now we move on to uh, another idea. It's kind of like a, in the Harry Potter series, you know, the Rememberal. Neville Longbottom got the Rememberal. Have you read Neville? Kathleen? You know? Yeah, you know I went Neville. went to high school with Neville. You did. He ah, was, get out of here. Yeah, he kidding. was. <laughs> Neville was very forgetful. And so he got a Rememberal, which was this thing that whenever you've forgotten something, it you know it, uh, oh. it lights up to tell you that you've forgotten something. Of course, it doesn't tell you what you've forgotten. Mm -hmm. But this is kind of like a, a, a digital rememberal. It's called a tile, and it's an application, but it's also a little bitty device. And you stick it on whatever you want to keep track of. Okay, like so, keys. Like keys. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Kathleen. Wow. <laughs> 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 uh, or, or or any of the stuff like your your diary. Oh yeah. Your you know, I probably you could stick one on your dog's collar. Sure, I'm mm, sure you could. That'd be a lot cheaper than a um. Than an, a, a, a chip. chip. A chip. Yeah. yeah. And so, but this this uh, these tile apps, these tile things, connect with your iPhone via the Bluetooths, uh, or it might be RFID. I haven't. I don't remember. But uh, but you can track all of your objects on your iPhone. And so whenever you lose it, whenever you misplace it, you just use location services and it will direct you right to it. Yeah. Hmm. What do you think, Jeff? I, I think, you know, it, it, it probably has a place. I don't know, though, if I would. Um, usually, usually I have one or two places I put my keys when I come in, you know, at the end of the day. You have a key bowl? So, uh, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, sort of. But uh, I'll toss them somewhere. So uh, I don't know what I would do if I miss. And I, now, I do misplace my iPhone occasionally. Mm -hmm. So you have to have your iPhone to try to find the missing thing. So <laughs> Yeah. Oh well that that's the thing. What do you yeah, what do you do if you're trying to keep uh, tabs on your iPhone, which is the problem that I have most yeah. of the time. Yeah. But it's really cool. Uh so yeah. you can use tile on as many things as you want, up to ten tiles on an account. You can share access to tiles with friends, family and trusted coworkers. Um and and the tiles themselves sound an alert if triggered. So basically, you lose something and you say, "Okay, s sound off." Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> and you go find it. It yeah. also remembers where you last saw the tile. That's and, I, and I like the idea that you can get your neighbors and friends and stuff involved to kind of help you. Uh, yeah. Because they could, uh, you know, like exactly. you can you can allow them to uh, share the app, if you will. <laughs> so so this kind of renders Jesus's parable about the lost coin mute moot. You know, because then the lady would have just. Uh, I, I I found out. The coin in that in that scripture passage uh -huh. represents a, a drachma or a denarii, I should say, a denarius represents a day's wage. And so the woman goes searching for this lost coin because it was a day's wage. Mm -hmm. And so she spends what could be a day searching for a day's wage. So she's trying to find this thing quickly, and mm -hmm. and, and the reason she's rejoicing is because she could have lost a day's labor searching for a coin worth a day's labor. Wow. And so all the more the rejoicing that she found the coin. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, that's your little <laughs> your little exegeso bite today for I scripture. wonder I wonder if this tile would have made the uh search for the lost sheep nah, any um, better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the sheep usually don't have a problem uh, sounding off. That's true that. True that's that. very true. Um, speaking of things that I think everybody is sounding off on, the FAA says that you can use wireless devices all through your flight. You just can't call anybody. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So so basically, you can use airport or airplane mode on on your devices. I like this because whenever I travel, uh, I like to uh, to pray morning prayer if I'm traveling early in the morning or evening prayer if I'm in the evening. Yeah. And uh, and. Oftentimes, I have to wait until we're in the air when I'd much rather do it while we're taxiing, mm -hmm. you know, because as soon as you're in the air, you've reached 10,000 feet, people start, you know, the beverage carts come up and down and people start wanting to chat, you know, and that sort of thing. And I don't mind chatting. It's one of the reasons I wear my collar so that I can, 
interact with people. Yeah. But but it, oddly enough, the the taxi way is usually where people are just kind of settling and they're going, okay, all right. right. Yep. I'm I'm on the plane. Let me just be on the plane for a minute. And so that's when I usually like to do that. So I like the idea that from the time that I get on the plane, I can just get her going. That's nice. Yeah. Hmm. Or or like Kathleen, you can watch uh, movies about your dog. What can I use my Wi-Fi up, up there? Probably. I mean, yeah, air, air, airplane mode or, or probably, it depends mm-hmm. on if they turn the Wi-Fi on. A lot of those, it could just be the FAA thing, but I bet they'll start turning on their Wi-Fi sooner. Mm. So, yeah. But one of the things they did say, the FAA said, yeah, we're, we're cool with it, but yeah. it's going to be up to the individual airlines. Right. Delta's already getting things started. Oh, good. Uh, okay. I think United is as well. Good. Cool. Um, I, I very much like that idea. Okay. And one of the other things you could do is uh, read an EPUB from the Vatican. You can have your Kindle out because the Vatican has jumped on the EPUB train. All of Pope Benedict's annual messages for World Communications Day, which, by the way, are very good reads. Uh, If you want to know where the church stands on communication, where the church stands on social media, Pope Benedict, you can see the whole development of his thought from his messages on World Communications Day. And uh, the Vatican has made that available uh, via EPUB. So if you're using uh, a Kindle, yes. Yes, Jeff, you in the back. Yeah, uh, Father, I have a question here. <laughs> this EPUB thing now, do you have to have a special reader for for? Is it an EPUB file? Is, it is an EPUB file format. Okay. And right. so EPUB, uh, I, I believe that um, that the Kindle reads EPUB. Again, if only Father Ryan were here, he would tell ah, me I'm wrong. Okay. Uh, I think the most of the major readers, including your iPad, can read an EPUB format. Okay, I didn't know if it was specific to a, uh, a brand, like, you know, the Kindle or the No, that's it. Well, yeah, the, the EPUB is actually a, a, a universal ah, okay. file format, right, like PDF. Essentially, um, so EPUB mm-hmm. train uh, they uh, jumped on it. I, I cannot yeah. interrupt you there. No, no, that's qu- that's quite all right. And, and so you can actually, I like the fact that the the Vatican is doing this mm-hmm. because one of the things that you remember from a couple of episodes back is whenever the Holy Father released his first encyclical. Yeah, uh, there was a, a young man by the name of Brandon Vaught who was very for to the forefront of social yes. media who released uh, an EPUB version of it. And he was imme- immediately smacked down with a cease and desist. <laughs> right, I remember and, that. Uh, and so this is one of those things where you're like, okay, all right, they're jumping on the bandwagon, good. Let's see how the second encyclical comes out you know, uh, and, and yeah. see if, if they're doing the same thing. And then we get to um, quite possibly a very beautiful story. And uh, we've talked about this on the See You Later a couple of times. We, we've talked about it um, uh, probably a good deal. And that's the power of a religious habit. And it comes to us from Homiletic and Pastoral Review, uh, and it's on the Ignatius Insight blog, which, by the way, is a very good blog um, for for reading all sorts of uh, really good reflections on on Catholic life. And um, basically, it, uh, it it's just the notion of of the story of of a sister wearing her habit, and and it's one of those things where. Um, just that evocative nature of, of the religious habit is, is so, so important. And, uh, and many uh, might be hesitant. Uh, you know, I know for, for priests, sometimes we're hesitant as well. And yet how important the habit is, not only for those who see it, but also it's a reminder of one's vocation and vow to God. And so, in a sense, I, I wear my religious garb uh, as, as a priest um, as an outward sign that, that you know, I'm intending to, 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 to live my life in a certain way, but also a, as a reminder to myself that, that I'm espoused to, to Christ and to his church. And the cool thing about a religious habit, too, is uh, and actually I don't I don't know about my clerical shirt because I don't remember blessing it I know there's a the right for blessing of a cassock but the religious habit itself is a sacramental and you remember what a sacramental is right a sacramental is an outward sign that disposes the wearer and others who see it to receive graces and I don't know Kathleen um, religious habits are one of those things that a lot of especially young women are becoming drawn to once again. Absolutely. Well, you know, in a, in a society where it's, you know, it, everybody looks the same. Yeah. The idea of being set apart for something different. Right. Um, you know, I've seen our young, the young women in our diocese, just the, you know, being attracted to different religious orders. They're, they're flocking to those that are, 
are set apart visually Mm -hmm. um, and who wear a full habit and who, you know, live in community and, and there's something visually different about them. Yeah. And, and and that's the thing too, I think is, is um, being able to see just how powerful, you know, Jesus talks about, uh, or the, the story is told of Jesus walking through a crowd and he's wearing a cloak, you know, this, this long flowing, just kind of outer garment and we recall the story of the woman with the hemorrhage, right? And and she'd been going to doctors for years, and nobody could do anything for her, and she'd spent all her money. And she knew that if she got to his cloak, and if she touched the hem of it, that something was going to happen. She was going to have an encounter with the Lord, whatever that meant. And sure enough, she touches the hem of his garment, and what happens? The, the flow of blood dries up. The hemorrhage is gone. And Jesus is aware that power has gone out from him, from his, from him through his cloak to her. And to think that, that whenever a priest wears their collar, whenever he, they wear their cassock, whenever a, a religious person wears their habit, that it really can be a very similar experience for somebody who maybe is spiritually hemorrhaging. You know, Jeff, I, I don't know. Have you thought about that, maybe? No. <laughs> As a matter I mean, of fact. I, I beautifully put, though. I mean, that is so... That that was high calorie there, Father. I mm-hmm. want you to know. Heavy fat content on that one that's right lots of fiber and <laughs> i love that though uh that, that's a yeah. beautiful and so yeah. it really is a beautiful thing to to think that that a religious habit really can be powerful not just for the wearer but also for the one who, yeah. who sees the, the other person wearing it yes. and, and that that grace can be dispensed oftentimes you think about grace as this thing that you know, it's just kind of untouchable. Nobody knows what it is or where it goes. Uh, you know, it's a TV show uh, concept. But grace is a real thing. It makes us more like God. It's that supernatural stuff that we're not born with anymore, but that we have to ask for and we have to merit. And the Lord is freely, he's willing to give it to us. And through sacraments and sacramentals, he's willing to dispense it. We have to be wanting to say, yeah, I, I want to open my heart to it. I want to be free from sin. That's it. Yeah. So that I can receive it, and what a beautiful thing that that the Lord can use a person, how they are attired, how they're dressed. You know, that's kind of kind interesting. Of that mm-hmm. that uh, kind of uh, points to today's gospel about mm-hmm. uh, you know Jesus walking along the road and Zacchaeus climbs up the tree or yeah. uh, you know to get a better look. Right. But then how meeting Jesus, Jesus said, "Hey, I'm going to be at your place today. I'm coming over there to to stay at your house." Yeah. And how just that uh, that encounter, and, and it had to do with his, I'm sure his countenance, but also the way he was dressed. Jesus was was yeah physically attired. Yeah, we know that Jesus was. Which, by the way, good good connection for for the gospel there. Uh, but but Jesus, yeah, sure, he was probably dressed um, like an ordinary rabbi, like an ordinary guy, yeah. you know. Uh, and yet uh, there was something in in that that physical expression. Of, of of his externals that you know didn't show that he was set off yeah but you know a lot of times like whenever i'm wearing my collar folks can kind of give me a wide berth because they're like oh well he's he's a part he's set apart mm-hmm. but when they come in in contact with a person who is dressed like this but yes. then acts in a human way towards them yes all of a sudden a a um, a theology of encounter can take place, like uh, right? An experience of an encounter, mm-hmm. a true Christian encounter can take yeah. place. And so there's... And look at what happened with Zacchaeus. Well, I mean, you know, he uh, he said, anybody I've wronged, what, I'm, I'm going to pay him four uh, times over? Yes, uh, yes. He, he said, I'm going to give all half of my possessions to the poor, and if yeah. I've extorted anybody, I will repay it four times over. Yeah. Basically, he was saying, I'm willing to be a pauper now. I want to be poor now, and I don't really care because I've met you, Jesus. That's right. And that's the only thing that matters. Imagine if wearing a religious habit to our good sisters out there and, and, and mm-hmm. brothers and to our good priests, imagine if, if, if wearing your religious garb can bring somebody to that kind of conversion. And it's possible. It really is possible. Yeah, the Lord will, pr- will prepare those hearts uh, yeah. for you, uh, th- those people that you will encounter, and they will know you. That's true. That's very true. That's very true. Well, we've tarried long enough uh, on the religious habit. I think Have maybe we, now? we need to go to that little part of the show that we like to call the CU Pick of the Week. And we had a little extra time, so I figured we'd, we'd you know, use it. Uh, so, Kathleen, your Pick of the Week, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in because I actually haven't, uh, haven't experienced this Pick of the Week. Me yes. too. 
Well, last this past Thursday, yeah, um, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, got its very own Trader Joe's. Oh. And I was like, what is this Trader Joe's? Because when I went up to visit our friend Roberto yeah. in Canada, they had one. Oh. And we briefly went in, looked around, and came out. Um, but I don't really remember remember it. So they have been kind of building this up, Trader Joe's, Trader Joe's. And um, Saturday, a friend, uh, my friend Aaron and I were out and about, and I thought, well, let's just stop by. It can't be that crazy. Mm-hmm. No, no, it was crazy. <laughs> Trader, jo- Tra- Trader Joe's is like a um, cheaper Whole Foods. Hmm. So they sell organic things. Now, it's not a large store, especially the, well, the one here in Baton Rouge is not. Um, but they sell some organic things, some local things. It's very much a um, neighborhood market feel. Ah, uh, so is that uh, kind of the, the what what they the the feel they go for yeah, is, is yeah. And so, not and corporate. Yes. Uh, yeah, and so uh. um, you know, we they had a, a list of things, 10 things to try at Trader Joe's. Now, when we got there on Saturday, it was full of people um and half the shelves were empty. Mm. But for the experience, we were only there for about 40 minutes. And um, when we got in there, the line actually wrapped around the back of the store. Oh, wow. wow. And so, I, you know, I thought, well, we don't have any place else to go. And I'm not really hurried. Let's just jump in line. Yeah. Ten minutes in the line. Ten minutes. They had opened all the, the ca- you know, the cash registers. You never see that. No. And, <laughs> you know, it could be that it's opening weekend. But, but when we got there and we got in line, the staff that was manning the line were just so positive. You know, we got up to the front and our... The guy checking us out was just cool as a cucumber, you know. Not, I'm sure he had been checking people out all day, mm-hmm. but just so cool. And and you know, um, so obviously in their training, they they yeah, maybe that's built into their training. You know, and we said, hey, can we have two transactions? Is that going to be a problem? He's like, no, man, just pick out. You tell me what in in your cart is yours, and I'll. And so I'm telling him what's, and he's just did they out. import the hippies, Kathleen? Yeah, I mean, he, <laughs> they he was imported? really cool, and and you know the. Some people were kind of cuckoo crazy, but for the most part, it was a great experience, and I'm I'm very excited that it's here. Um, I'm excited to go back in when it's calmed down and check out that that ten item list. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was impressed. I was very impressed for an opening weekend um, that that it, things went so smoothly and things were so positive. And it's a beautiful store. Yeah. So Trader Joe's, check it out. Maybe I'll uh, make that a day off list thing mm-hmm. item. You know. Yeah, you might need to go when people are in. Oh, at their work. when they're at work. That's at a good At least idea. if you want to go in the next month or so, I would say. Yeah, it takes some time. All right, uh, Jeff Blackwell, uh, this is a very pragmatic pick of the week for you. Listen, I know normally we we pick apps or books or movies. Well, I, I've got a 1999 Suburban. I love that old truck, and it's uh, a little under the weather, so, yeah. However, <laughs> there is a little bit of good news. I uh, I was uh, looking around for some auto parts, and you know there, there's the local places you can go, but I came across this one online, Auto Parts Warehouse. Now, any of you guys uh, and girls who are shade tree mechanics out there, if you're <laughs> just looking for, I mean, fuses, a, a gas. Oh, I need an or, antenna for my 2008 Saturn View. Well, there you go. Here's hmm. here's what I really love about it because they have a place where you can put in the uh, make and model of your uh, vehicle. Answer a few questions. Usually it's about four questions, you know, the year, model, and the make, and uh, maybe engine size, something like that. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but, but then you have this whole list of different things you can choose. And I was looking for a fuel pump. Uh, uh-huh. So, uh, But they had some that were, you know, like a $70 to $800. Oh, yeah. But I'm like, oh, wait a minute. That w- so you can choose, I think it's up to four, and do side-by-side comparisons. And see what all the features are of each one, each of it, individual one, including the warranty. So I got the, the the one with the longest warranty, and really it was right kind of in the middle of the price. Uh, so I just thought it was so good for those guys, and like I say, the people, every everyone today is just trying to save money somewhere. And um, if you can kind of do it yourself, this is a great do-it-yourself site, Auto Parts Warehouse. Ooh, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck on it right now. <laughs> Hold on, we got to get back to the show here, because uh, I, I really do. I, I can't listen to Catholic Community Radio in, in Baton Rouge or New Orleans because I have no antenna. Yeah. I remember vaguely somebody unscrewing it to uh, to wash my car or something, or maybe it was uh, me, uh-huh. and it never found its way back onto oh. my car. So. 
So I do need one of those. You can also check out the junkyards too, because I'm and I say junkyards, but I mean that's that's a good cheap well, place that's, to. That's not a bad idea. Yeah, I never just, think about that. All just of walk these walk up to the counter and tell them what you're looking for. All of these manual things where I <laughs> have to leave my computer and go out where that flaming orb in the sky is. I don't know about all that. <laughs> all right. At any rate, my pick of the week um, has to do with prayer. We talked a little bit about prayer on the show today, uh-huh. and um, God in all things dot com slash prayer. It is uh, in uh, a very uh, well well known um, Ignatian uh, website, um, and uh, it has a, r- a really good section on prayer resources. And so, if um, if you if you want resources on discernment and decision making, they've got that. Um, but also Ignatian prayer, if that's your your thing. Uh, also, some general ideas for prayer some stuff on the liturgy, and they also have some really nice videos, too, uh, on on Ignatian prayer models and things like that. And a hat tip to Father Michael Lello, one of the priests of our diocese, who who had this on his Facebook feed a couple of weeks ago. And it really, really is good. And uh, it it talks about just the how, the why, and the what of prayer, why it's important, why we should do it, and uh, and some really, really good other resources. I I like the idea of uh, also there's a, a section for praying in silence, and what the, that's all about. Uh, so, um, and then of course the liturgy of the hours. If you happen to be unfamiliar with the liturgy of the hours, that official prayer of the church, they've got uh, the link to divineoffice.org, which is also an app, by the way. Ah, and uh, maybe for those of you who aren't pl- praying the liturgy of the hours, if you want to know a little bit more about the psalms of the church, if you want to start praying the psalms, that's a, a good way to start. And let me tell you, there is so much meat in the psalms that that you really could go for for. Hours and hours uh, on just one psalm alone, on uh, on letting the Lord speak to you there. So, so we'll put that in the show notes. Uh, Godinallthings.com's uh, prayer resources. And uh, as always, if you want the show notes, you can go to CatholicUnderground.com and look at the latest episode to do that. Yeah. And Jeff, um, I we, think we we thank people for supporting us. Indeed, we do, and portions of the Catholic Underground are brought to you by audibletrial.com slash catholicunderground. That's audibletrial.com slash catholicunderground. Thank you, Jeff. And, of course, uh, we, we want to thank you also for those of you who are watching us via our video feed, those of you who are listening to us in audio and in podcast format. Of course, uh, pa- podcast listeners, we especially appreciate you because, well, you're how we got started with all this. Um, one of the things that uh, our, our video listeners, uh, our video watchers uh, on YouTube have, have noticed is, is that our, our video is kind of jerky there for a little while. And so uh, we actually have, um, have upgraded our equipment. And so if you uh, might want to look at uh, whether or not you've uh, renewed your Catholic Underground um, uh, subscription, uh, if that's something that you can do, we certainly invite you to do so. We know that you're always very generous to us, and so we thank you for making this purchase uh, to make your podcast better um, for uh, for YouTube. All righty, for all the show notes that accompany this episode in the podcast, if you want to find out more about our apostolate, if you want to find out how to connect with us on Twitter and Facebook, go over to catholicunderground.com. That's the place to do it. Kathleen Lee is our faith ninja at Kathleen Y-A-B-R. Thank you, Kathleen. Anytime. Jeff Blackwell is the tech director. Thank you, Jeff. It's always a privilege. And Mary-Kate Taylor is an evangelist, and in her spare time, she tracks down Bigfoots who haven't paid their cable bill. (laughs) You know me. I'm Father Chris Decker. You can follow me on Twitter at Digital Catholic. Join us on the interwebs for catholicunderground.tv for the see you later. Thanks for tuning in and hanging out with us on this digital continent. We're Catholic Underground. We're Faith Gone Digital. We'll see you next time. From the Catholic Underground.